Good morning, uh, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our digital official launch of the Meet the Zebras campaign. I'm joined here live with Chris Beswick from the UK, uh, who's going to be our keynote speaker today. And uh, just before we start, maybe to give you a little bit of an explanation of how Livestorm works for people that might not be used to using this platform, you have the people section. Uh, where well, you see who's actually in the webinar and who's participating. Then, so this is on the right-hand side of your screen. Then you have a questions box, uh, which will come in handy after uh, Chris's uh, keynote, because you can ask questions. We'll have a Q&A round uh, with Chris afterwards. And we have the chat, which I see is being used already, where you can obviously um, put messages like saying hello or telling us where you're from. Uh, and to interact with the people in this webinar. So my name is Mark Liss. I am the cluster manager at uh, for Creative Industries at Lux Innovation, and I'll be guiding you through this webinar and moderating it. So we are at the launch phase of this um, safari, let's say, with our zebras, uh, and I'll talk you briefly through the program what we have in store today. So we'll have a welcome from the Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, Lex Dallas, which will be in French. Uh, it will be a video message, but subtitles. So don't worry if uh, you're a native English speaker, you will be able to follow that message. Uh, we have Chris, who I already briefly introduced as our keynote speaker, who has his uh, keynote based on creativity builds bridges. Uh, Chris is joining us from the UK. Then we have the Minister of Culture, Sam Tonson, uh, who will do a video um, gr greeting message and talk about Culture Alex and ASH 2022. Uh, that video will be subtitled as well. I will have the honor to um, explain the concept and structure of the Meet the Zebras uh, webinar series. And after that, we will have our CEO, uh, Sasha Bailey from Lux Innovation, with some key messages and who will be launching the series officially and then you will be able to register for the upcoming webinars as well so without further ado i'll leave the stage for the minister of small and medium-sized enterprises lex dallas with his welcome message mesdames et messieurs le zèbre et le cheval appartiennent à la même famille et sont pourtant différents tandis que le cheval a été domestiqué toutes les tentatives de domestication du zèbre ont échoué. Son caractère indépendant et son apparence extraordinaire font de lui un des animaux les plus emblématiques de la savane. L'autonomie et l'indépendance du zèbre font penser aux caractéristiques extraordinaires des personnes créatives. Ces individus qui suivent leur propre voie trouvent des solutions originales et transforment le monde. Des caractéristiques qui décrivent d'ailleurs parfaitement l'industrie créative. C'est pourquoi le Luxembourg Creative Industries Cluster a décidé de rassembler les zèbres lors d'une série de webinaires dénommés « Meet the Zebras ». Je regrette par conséquent particulièrement de ne pas pouvoir être présent aujourd'hui en live lors de cet événement kick-off. Je suis cependant persuadé qu'il est indispensable de rassembler les acteurs pour renforcer la visibilité du secteur de l'industrie créative, d'où l'importance des webinaires qui vont promouvoir l'échange et le dialogue en matière d'innovation. Mesdames et Messieurs, le gouvernement luxembourgeois est conscient de la valeur économique et entrepreneuriale du monde créatif. C'est la raison pour laquelle un cluster national dédié aux industries créatives a été créé. Le Luxembourg Creative Industries Cluster s'engage depuis quatre ans à soutenir ses membres, à favoriser les collaborations et à augmenter leur visibilité. Je suis particulièrement ravi de pouvoir annoncer que le Cluster Creative Industries, avec l'aide du département Market Intelligence de Luxe Innovation, a établi pour la première fois une cartographie des entreprises de l'industrie créative au Luxembourg. Ce mapping nous permet d'analyser l'évolution de ce secteur au Grand-Duché. Et les chiffres sont impressionnants. 2419 entreprises, plus de 14 000 employés estimés issus des 12 secteurs différents, soulignent l'importance et la transversalité de l'industrie créative. Notons par exemple que 27% des entreprises proviennent du secteur de l'architecture, 18% du marketing communication et 15% de l'audiovisuel. Certains secteurs sont émergents avec des entreprises jeunes, 
comme par exemple le gaming et le design. Il est aussi à noter que les thèmes de la digitalisation et du développement durable sont omniprésents et prennent de plus en plus de poids. Soulignons également que le centre du pays regroupe 45% des industries créatives. 32% des entreprises se trouvent au sud du pays, tandis que 13% se trouvent au nord du Luxembourg et 10% à l'est. Notons aussi que la plateforme creativecluster.lu est devenue une vraie référence pour les industries créatives au Luxembourg et au-delà. Un outil qui constitue une vitrine pour les industries créatives et qui est source d'informations. L'industrie créative est donc clairement identifiée comme source d'emploi et de croissance avec un potentiel énorme. Il m'importe de souligner que la Direction générale des classes moyennes soutient ce secteur avec une grande conviction. L'échange permanent avec le cluster et Lux Innovation nous permet d'analyser le premier mapping du secteur et de déterminer ainsi ses besoins. Je tiens finalement à féliciter l'équipe du Luxembourg Creative Industries Cluster gérée par Lux Innovation pour le remarquable soutien qu'ils offrent aux entreprises luxembourgeoises et pour leur promotion des industries créatives au Grand-Duché. So that was our Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, Lex Dallas. Um, thank you very much for him to have joined us in this shape. Unfortunately, he couldn't be present physically. Uh, I think we're pretty much used now in this digital setup of webinars to have people joining remotely or in, in video messages. But um, we're very thankful and grateful that he took the time to address us. And he, uh, we will delve a little bit more into detail about the uh, sector mapping that he mentioned and about the platform um, afterwards when I will be talking about the concept as well. So this is the time to um, welcome Chris. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Hi, Mark. <laughs> How are you? I'm really good, thank you. Really good. <laughs> thank I'm you very much. <laughs> good. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining us. And um, I'm also very excited. We've exchanged sort of over the past few weeks and months uh, to sort of build up this um, launch webinar. And I'm really looking forward to hearing your keynote. Uh, Chris, as an introduction, is the best-selling author and also a specialist in terms of innovation. And uh, we felt that would be the perfect outfit to have a, a keynote for this launch webinar. So I'm um, yeah, on tenterhooks and really <laughs> looking forward to hearing your presentation. So I'll, I'll give you the floor and um, uh, looking forward to it. Brilliant. Thanks, Mark. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, as I said, I'm really excited, one, to have been asked to help launch um, today and, and, and also excited to share some of my thoughts on why I think creativity helps us build bridges, both internally and, and externally in organizations. Um, as Mark just said, I, uh, I have wrote a few books. Um, the last one, Building a Culture of Innovation, really apt um, for today. Um, and um, I'm not going to talk too much about that. Um, but one of the things I do want to highlight is that the, this particular book was built for big organizations, big organizations that that want to try and act and behave like smaller organizations like SMEs. And the challenge in general is that the size and complexity of those big organizations directly influences their ability to change direction and pace. The beauty about us, and I class myself as, as an SME, the beauty about us and you is that compared to big organizations, we as smaller companies can change faster. And as you're all aware and the challenges we've all been through over the past year, that ability to adapt and to change and change uh, at a faster pace um, has proved to be really, really important. And that's some of the things that I wanna to talk to you about today. You all I'm sure have heard Culture Eat Strategy for Breakfast by the famous Peter Drucker and culture um, as the title of my book suggests, is, is really important. How we build a culture of innovation is really important. The challenge is, I think, we now live in times where, where Drucker was probably right, maybe, you know, pre-2008, pre-Lehman Brothers, where the world was more linear, where it was more predictable, 
and where it was more stable. And in those times, I think culture probably did eat strategy for breakfast. The challenges, and one of the things I want to talk about today is uh, are my views on whether, you know, does culture still eat breakfast uh, strategy for breakfast? Um, or do we need a more systemized approach, a more cohesive, a more holistic approach to being able to sometimes survive, but hopefully for every one of you out there, thrive and drive growth and shape the future. So I think the first thing to recognize is um, turmoil isn't going away. And on all of these slides, or, or the majority of them, I've tried to provide a key word um, that we can have a discussion about. I'm going to present my thoughts, and we can have a discussion about in the Q&A later. Um, and if anyone is frantically trying to sketch these slides out or, or, or write down some of these keywords, then don't worry, because we'll, we can provide a PDF to anyone that wants it. Um, but the uncertainty that the pandemic has caused um, and continues to cause, um, I think means creativity and innovation is more important than ever before. And having a creative mindset and a positive mindset about how we view the world, despite the volatility and despite the turmoil and despite all of the things that we're being asked to face at the moment, I think it means creativity is more important than ever before. I think we have to acknowledge that there will always be turmoil of some kind. There will always be disruption. There will always be challenges that we face as employees, as citizens, um, and as directors and CEOs of businesses. And it's how we deal with those challenges and how we deal with that turmoil um, that is supercharged by creativity. So the language that designers and, and people in the design world, and that's the, the background that I came from, is, you know, we talk about things as wicked problems. And the reality is those wicked problems require wicked solutions. And, and as, as an entrepreneur myself, or I suppose classed as a serial entrepreneur, um, I, I absolutely acknowledge that building a successful business means being able to spot problems, being able to turn them into opportunities, and then being able to build valuable business models around them. But we have to do that more than once. You know, we can't be, you know, one-time wonders. We can't just create something and hope that for the rest of our careers or the, our whole business will, will continue to survive and thrive off one idea. We have to build sustainable businesses. And our job as leaders, and my belief is that our job as leaders, is to build organizations that are constantly capable of solving those wicked problems. And creativity is the backbone of how we do that. The challenge is that, and if any, anyone has, has, um, uh, has seen this phrase before, VUCA, um, originally coined by the military, the American military, to describe the operating environment, the theater that, that the military operates in, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And the challenges for leaders, and, and the majority of work that I do is, is with senior executives and senior leaders, helping them navigate this VUCA world, helping them build and embed creativity and innovation into the very heart of their organizations. And the challenges for me as leaders is how we see the world and what kind of VUCA world we believe we operate in, what kind of VUCA world we see, and how that affects our mindset and how that affects the decisions that we make and, the, and how we inspire and how we lead our people. And the challenges I do see because of the pandemic and because of disruption, I see leaders seeing the world and, and operating in this kind of VUCA, a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. Now think about the mindset that um, that you have if you view the world as volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And as an entrepreneur, you know we we have to view the world as something to explore, as something that we can make better. Um, we have to believe that there is a better tomorrow. Creativity is about 
doing things differently and solving problems and making the world better. So for me, one of the first things that we all need to share is an absolute positive mindset that the world is a better place or we can make the world a better place through creativity and through innovation. And I believe, and this is one of the things that I teach the leaders I work with, I think we, you know, leading for the future and being a future fit leader, I think, is about seeing the world like this. About seeing the world as a VUCA world, but one where we as creative leaders say the VUCA world to us is about being visionary. It's about being unbounded. It's about being absolutely curious. And it's about being authentic. And when we view the world in that way, we open up incredible possibilities around what we can do with creativity and innovation. It's something that psychologists called flow or being in the optimal state of mind. And creativity ultimately um, uh, demands that we uh, that we're in that ultimate state of mind, that that we have a positive mindset and that we're in that state of flow where we believe we can do better. And one of the key things we've learned um, from business leaders like this is, you'll, you'll recognize this is Elon Musk. One of the key things we know in business is that purpose is absolutely key. Purpose and driving purpose through creativity and through innovation is absolutely key. And one of the, a brilliant quote by Elon Musk, which I absolutely love, and this really sums this up for, for leaders around the world who traditionally, as we all know, have put profit before purpose and all those things. Elon Musk recently said, if it was just about money, I'd have started another internet business. And I think that's a really great, inspiring view around being really clear that purpose is absolutely paramount to everything we do. And, you know, the pandemic for me has served as an inflection point for many CEOs and many leaders and and business owners of all kinds to say, how do we react to this? How do we make sure that our businesses not just survive, but actually come through and are stronger, are more valuable, are more creative? You know, how do we reposition purpose and creativity and innovation at the heart of everything we do. And I think that's because purpose is the antidote to the opposite reaction to the pandemic and situations like this, which is paralysis. And as creatives, we have the ability to tell better stories around purpose and around how we've reshaped our organizations. And that creative and strategic storytelling and the messages that we push out as creatives can serve as lessons to every business in every industry. And I think that shows people that putting purpose at the heart of what we do helps us shift our mindset from short-term resilience and, and being in a reactionary state to long-term value creation, which is what we all want. And creativity itself is about those bigger, bolder decisions. It's about taking the status quo and taking what everyone thinks is standard and doing something completely different and unique with it. And whether that's playing the guitar because you're a musician, whether it's typography because you're a graphic designer, whether it's the structure of a building because you're an architect, whether it's dance, whatever industry you're in and whatever your form of creativity is, that ability to show people that there's a different way that there's a different solution and that what was perceived as okay yesterday, tomorrow could be something completely different and bold and fresh and new is really important. And when we when we use those qualities and though that mindset and that ability towards business, that's when really, really great things happen. And that's when those wicked problems get solved because creativity is the ability or gives us the ability to create wicked solutions. And now if you combine two of the things that I've just talked about, being really purpose-driven or turning the volume up on purpose and turning the volume up on creativity, for me, you get curiosity. And that combination of 
purpose and creativity as leaders, as business people, as entrepreneurs, as creatives makes us curious. And what we need in business is more curiosity because curiosity um, demands that we, that we, we explore and we experiment and we, we try and, you know, we, we try and solve that curiosity, that curious nature that we have. How can we do this? Is there a better way? What happens if we try something different that we've never done before? And that curious nature is, is where we start to explore and where we maybe take a little bit more risk. And when we do that, that's where we find innovation lives. Innovation lives at the edge of those things, being more curious and more willing to try different things. And I think turning the heat up or turning the volume up or amplifying purpose and amplifying our creative approach to purpose breeds the kind of curiosity that all businesses need, not just to the creative industry. But as the creative industries, we're able to demonstrate and show and tell stories about these things in much more creative ways than other businesses. And that's one of the bridges that I think helps us build. Now, while technology and automation and machine learning and AI and all of these, you know, computers and art, you know, all of these things help us keep up with the pace of change. But those things themselves are a result of human imagination. They're a result of human creativity. And it's that creativity and it's that imagination that separates us from the machines as human beings. And I don't think I've ever heard any child say, I'll never be able to ride a bike. I'm just not one of those pedaling people. The challenge is as we get older, we believe maybe through education, we are told or shaped or convinced that we're maybe not as creative as we once were as a child. Um, and I think we have to encourage all of our people that in different ways, we are all creative. We're all creative in some way, shape or form. And tapping into that creativity as businesses and as employees and as leaders is really important. And whether that's creativity as an accountant with numbers and being able to manage and present figures in a different way, whether it's creativity because you work in the logistics department of a business and you just you have a different view on how to, I don't know, organize a warehouse. All of those things fundamentally are, are is creativity. It's about seeing different ways of doing things. We're all creative in some way, shape or form. And um, as businesses, we need to tap into that creativity in order to succeed and in order to shape the future. And one of the bridges that we can help build as creative people is showing every other industry and every other business how to do some of these things. One of the key things for me, though, is environment, and that's become a real challenge over the past year, this shift from, from traveling into the office every day and sitting behind our desk uh, or in our cubicle or in, in, a, in a meeting room, and that shift to working from home and being in environments like this where we're all now having to create our own workspace and our, our, our own version of how we would have worked at work in the office. An environment is really key and creatives and people in the creative industries, specifically designers and architects, you know, we all know more than most how important that creative environment is in order to breed collaboration and the, the, you know, the, the, the water cooler moment and those small collisions of people where, a conversation starts and an idea emerges. All of those different things have been really difficult throughout the pandemic. So as creatives, what we need to do is show other people how to bridge the gap between what was the work environment of old and what is the work environment of today, i.e. work from home or remote working, or in some cases, some organizations saying work from anywhere. We need to help organizations bridge the gap and and 
show organizations how working from anywhere can be just as productive, just as creative, just as collaborative as the old way of work when we went into offices. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say, listen, Chris, the best ideas I've ever had have been when I've been sat in that five hour long board meeting in the boardroom with another 10 people staring at a screen at the end of the room. Environment is key to creativity. And if you have your best ideas when you're in the bath, when you're in bed, when you're out walking the dog, when you're out trekking over hills, wherever it is, whether you're out cycling, whatever environment is best for you to pull out that creative nature that we all have, that's what we have to tap into. The flip side is, if environment to you is about influence and texture and size and shape and ergonomics and, and collecting things that inspire you, then take a leaf out of Mark Parker's book. So Mark was the ex-CEO of Nike, and this is his office. Now, you look at it and you think, wow, is that a storage cupboard for someone who collects way too many things? But no, this is what the office of um, Mark Parker looked like. And Mark was regularly voted one of the most creative CEOs in the world. So we need to use environment to spark creativity. It's super important. What we also do need to do as creatives is help ourselves and help our employees and help our, our, our teammates and help other organizations understand how to collaborate better. And, and that's around collaborating inside organizations as teams, but also collaborating outside organizations. As creatives, communication has always been something that we could probably claim to be better at than most other industries and most other sectors. And what we can do as creatives is really help foster a collaborative nature inside other organizations and help them build bridges with other organizations outside and build that innovation ecosystem approach where, because with some of those wicked problems we may find that we can't solve ourselves. And that will require us to collaborate with others to create the wicked solutions that those wicked problems need. Collaboration um, is super important because innovation isn't a solo sport, it's a team sport. And one of the final things I really wanna emphasize is, for me, creativity is what I call a willing contribution. We can't contractually force our employees to be creative. We can't force our employees or make them as part of their employment contract, give us their ideas. We can do lots of other things contractually, but we can't force people or contractually make them be creative, give us their creativity, be inspiring and help us solve those problems. Our job as creatives and as creative leaders is to build an environment, not just where people are happy to come to work or they say, yeah, it's okay, you know, my job's pretty good. We need to really understand the power of love in organizations. For me, we need to build organizations that are so creative, that are driving innovation on a daily basis, where our people say, Do you know, I absolutely love working for this organization. The stuff that we do, the way that we do it, the problems that we solve, the way that we that we collaborate with others, the way that we interact and collaborate with our empl employees and our customers. I just absolutely love working here. Imagine the mindset of everyone in our organization if that's how they felt, even on a Monday morning, that dreaded Monday morning, getting up for work. Imagine if their mindset was, I, have, I can't wait to get into work because we're doing some absolutely amazing stuff. That for me is something so undervalued and not driven enough in organizations that we as creatives need to help other organizations amplify. So I started at the beginning by saying, you know, is Peter Drucker right? Is culture, you know, does culture still eat strategy for breakfast? And if you remember, I positioned it as, well, probably, but pre Lehman Brothers, when the world was a bit more predictable, was more linear and a bit more stable. In the world that we operate in today, 
I think culture is absolutely important. Creativity is important. Innovation is absolutely paramount. But to get there, I think our holistic system approach means that strategy, leadership, and culture need to eat breakfast together. If we want to drive creativity, if we want innovation, we need to build the bridges between strategy, between leadership, and between culture so that all three of those things work together so that we can build and drive innovative solutions because we've, we're building innov innovative businesses. And the final point that I wanna make is sometimes trying to be creative and trying to be innovative is difficult when we don't think that we have the things others do when we think well we're a small business we're an sme we don't have the resources of a big company we don't have the people we don't have the technology creativity is about circumnavigating those challenges it's about finding ways around them or over them or through them and the key thing for me is about the ability to be adaptable and resilient and that means creativity is the key. It's the key to how we survive and how we move around obstacles and how we say, well, okay, we haven't got those resources, but how else could we tackle it? And my key message is don't wait to be creative and don't wait to be innovative because you're waiting for something else to happen or you're waiting for, for some more resources or some more things. Make fire with the wood that you have figure out what people you have, unpack their capability, you know, assess or build an inventory of the things that you have at your disposal and make fire with the wood that you have. Drive creativity and drive innovation with the things that you do have rather than waiting for the things that you don't. My final message is these are, without question, unprecedented times. They should for me, and they have for me and a lot of my clients, acted as that inflection point, as an extreme example of why as organizations we need to change and we need to adapt and we need to be creative. Turmoil isn't going away. So as a leader, understand that innovation is the antidote. Embrace purpose, embrace creativity, embrace innovation, empathy. Be more human-centric than you've ever been before. And I promise if you do that and you combine all those things, you will thrive even in these difficult times. So my final message is be future shapers, be pioneers, and to do that, be a little bit more zebra. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris, for this very inspiring keynote. Um, welcome, Sasha. Our CEO has joined us. <laughs> Good morning. Um, so yeah, if people want to ask questions, you can type them in the in the questions uh, section, and then we'll pick them out and ask them uh, directly to Chris. Um, I do have one which um, in Davos they were saying that creative thinking is uh, going to be one of the top three skills in terms of employment. How do you rate creative thinking? I mean, it, it kind of like it came through in your presentation already, but how important? Yeah. Where do you rank it, say, in the top three in, in having skills in terms of employability and in changing, uh, helping change a business uh, from from within? I think I think the challenge is there are so many there are so many things that that we now know are more important than they were a few years ago. Creativity, empathy, purpose, all of those things. But yeah, whether it's one, two, or three, creativity is definitely in the top three. And the interesting thing is IBM did a study about 10 years ago now um, where they surveyed CEOs from around the world. And even then, um, they found that over 60% of the world's CEOs said creativity was the number one skill required as leaders to be able to, to lead and shape organizations and drive growth. And I don't think that has ever changed. I think the challenge is not enough of us have embraced creativity and really understood what it is in a business context. I think for many corporate leaders, there's still this view that, well, creativity is creativity. You know, I'm a businessman. We need to build strategies and solve problems. And this is a business. It's not about being creative. And that's because they don't understand 
strategic creativity is what we used to call it when we we used to teach it. Um, so I think it will be, it's definitely in the top three and it may very well be the number one skill for leaders and organizations to be able to drive forward, innovate, and in some cases just survive. Um, so yeah, absolutely paramount. And, and it links perfectly to the World Economic Forum outgoing and incoming skills. Um, so it's definitely it's definitely in there. Okay, thank you, Chris. So we have questions coming in. Uh, Johnny Brevels, who is uh, the director of our department here at Lux Innovation, he's asking, hi, Chris. Um, so I'll put the answer on the, the question on the screen, sorry. Hi, Chris, to make fire with wood, you have, uh, of the, with the wood you have, one needs to light the fire. Any suggestions on how to light this fire? Um, so you you can rub sticks together. <laughs> um, I think it goes back to me. Really, it fundamentally starts with purpose. You know, as it, any organization, right, whether you're you know, whether you're a small two or three people startup. Or whether you're a thirty thousand, you know, corporate with thirty thousand employees spread spread around the world, what lights fires is the notion and the belief around what the organisation is doing and why it exists. So, what's the organisation's raison d'être as a startup? What's our raison d'être? Why were we born as an organisation? What problem did we? did we observe and did we say we think there's a better way of doing that we our aim and our reason for being is to solve that problem and if that is compelling enough that lights fires and and many organizations don't amplify that purpose well enough and and that's why we see you know predominantly people in corporates not necessarily smes or small businesses not having that fire because it just becomes a job and to love what you do, it has to be more than a job. It has to be more than I turn up to work because I get paid at the end of the month. There has to be a fire that the organization lights because you come to work. Utopia for me is you come to work because you say, I absolutely love the problem that we're solving. I love why our organization exists and what we're trying to achieve. And that for me is about purpose. Mm -hmm. So so to answer, um, whoever the question was, was figure Johnny, out. Johnny so J Johnny figure out what the core purpose is and whether everyone buys into that core purpose and I guarantee that itself will light fires uh, the next question is from um, Reza so I'll put it on screen so hello Chris thank you for your presentation could you please elaborate on the interaction of environment and creativity sure so physical environment for me is incredibly important um if i had a the best way to to summarize this is a picture and and i, I have one in some old presentations but think of in the i don't know the 80s and 90s and you know this is it was probably someone like ibm or microsoft or something and you know you had offices with multiple floors and on every floor, there were just rows and rows and rows of cubicles. And in each cubicle, there was a desk and a PC and a keyboard and a chair, right? You know, and there's a famous scene in The Matrix, I think, the original Matrix film, where it's exactly that situation. How well do you think and how much do you think that inspires us to be creative? You know, I used to call those the corporate jail cell, right? And... The other extreme then is an environment that promotes different thinking, that is built to inspire us. It's built to foster those water cooler moments. It's built to allow us to solve problems. You know, someone like Google is a great example. Almost every wall, you know, in, in Google offices is, it, you can write on the walls, right? Now, think about, bumping into a colleague that you haven't seen for a few days and you say, hey, Mark, oh, while I've got you, you know, that thing that we talked about the other day, I think I've got the answer. Here, let me just sketch it out for you. That, the, the environment itself is then part of how you solve problems, right? We, so we have to use environment as part of 
allowing us and enabling us to be creative. We have to use environment to tell stories. You know, organizations like North Face and Patagonia are great examples. North, there's a wall in North Face which in three dimensions, and I don't mean posters, physical product is chronologically lined up to, to show the evolution of the organization from, from its inception date right up to modern day products. The environment itself tells a story. And we have to use an environment like that to inspire us um, as opposed to viewing environment as, well, this is just the desk, this is where I work. You know, environment is so key. We, we wouldn't, think about this in your personal life, you wouldn't live in a house which was gray, with gray walls, with one chair in the middle of the room and nothing else, right? Or, you know, or, you know one chair, one coffee table, it's, it, it, the parallel is the same. Right? We build environments that we're comfortable in, that we, we like, where we have art on the walls that are colorful, that make us feel different, make us feel positive. And if we don't work in an environment like that, we don't get people who are inspired, who are switched on, who are in flow. We don't get people who are willing and ready to be creative. Environment is incredibly important. I think, yeah, I like that what you said about the sort of seeing the history, which points you to where you are now and shows, um, looking back chronologically, the whole evolution and the whole innovation yeah. process that you've done. And in Formula One, this is something they do very often. Where yeah. They display the cars and how they change them and yeah. uh, showing the new technology. Um, so think about how you could tell that. Think about how when if someone came to the office, think about how differently they can tell the story of their organization versus not having that and someone saying, oh, can you tell me a little bit more about North Face or, you know, Formula One? It becomes a bit bland, whereas, you know, creativity is about being visual, right, and three-dimensional. So environment's really important. Um, somebody just uh, mentioned something in the chat, but then I'll jump over to the next question. Uh, Francis Michaud says, but not easy to be creative in a non-receptive environment uh, in which we are not the leader. Um, so that as a comment from Francis. Uh, the question from Alain Schumacher, I'll put it back on the screen. Thank you for the um, uh, motivating talk. I think one of the main challenges is to get the innovative interference of different mindsets uh, in an existing organization. It yeah. kind of like comes to joins what Francie said in the chat. Yeah, and that, you know, that's always going to be the challenge. So the irony is innovation and creativity require different perspective, right? If we all think the same and we all have the same view, then we don't get creativity. We get, you know, we get groupthink. Um, but on the other hand, it, when people collaborate and they are they are creative and they're solving problems, we at least need them all aligned around the common goal of solving a problem. And in many organizations, there are differing views and differing priorities around, well, is innovation and creativity important? And for me and my department, no, it's not. And then we have the other department over there that are trying to champion creativity and innovation. So there will always be conflict in an organization specifically where um, where innovation isn't on the strategic agenda. So if innovation and building a culture of innovation and building innovation capability is part of the strategic agenda of the organization, i.e. it's at board level, it has been agreed and aligned that building that capability and that culture is of paramount importance, then it becomes easier. When things aren't on the strategic agenda, it becomes difficult to align different parts of organizations. And that's one of the key challenges, and more so in the big complex corporates. I think one of the things, because you mentioned them, uh, creators often being problem solvers and pioneers, um, with that comes risk as well. Uh, because if you try yeah. something different, you will not have the answer. So do you think that creative people are, are bigger risk takers than others? Do you know what? I think it depends on um, it depends on how confident you are that 
continuing to work as a business leader or business owner, continuing to work in the way that you have worked previously and are working now is sufficient to allow you or to enable you to thrive and achieve the goals that you set for your organization. If you're absolutely happy that you and confident that there won't be another pandemic or there won't be another Lehman Brothers and you, you're absolutely um, you know, impenetrable as an organization, then fine. You might, you might say, I'm that confident. We don't need to be creative. We don't need to do anything different. I think the opposite to that is we have seen over, certainly over the last year and definitely over the last decade that old business models are failing, old revenue streams are failing, you know, we now have, you know, we could never ever have predicted that an internet company would 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 be deemed as competition by a car manufacturer. Or, you know, we are blurring the lines of sectors and we are blurring the lines of who we deem as competition and who might come in and take some market share off us. And that requires us to think differently. And I don't want to use the word think outside the box because I think that phrase is wrong. Um, uh and but it requires us to think differently to come up with new ideas to think about how we can shift and move our organizations and inevitably that comes with a level of uncertainty because we are creating ideas and thoughts and products and business models or even creating a direction that we want our organization to go in that we've never been in before to balance that out, we have tools and frameworks and methodologies and ways of predicting things with certain levels of certainty. Um, and using all those allows us to be what we could, the language we use is hypothesis driven, right? So we build a hypothesis around what we think might unfold and what where we think the world is going. And we, we build those hypotheses with as much information and data and insight and foresight that we can gather. And that gives us, when we're driving innovation, a level of confidence that we can push forward in that direction up to a certain time frame where we have enough certainty that the world isn't going to change um, to give us confidence to push forward. We've never really done that in business before. What we've done is we've built strategies and roadmaps that are three, four, five, six years out. And then we've said, right, on Monday, we start implementing it. And 12 months in or two years in, we're still on that same roadmap, but the world's fundamentally changed around us, right? So you being more hypothesis driven helps us reduce the risk, but there's always going to be an element of risk. The difference is something I wrote about in my first book, which is so the difference between cavalier risk and smart risk. Most organizations have, have thought they were being smart about risk, but actually haven't done enough due diligence and, and built the right thesis and had enough evidence for the direction they've moved in. And, and ultimately, that has turned into um, cavalier risk because things haven't worked out. Mm -hmm. We can be much smarter about the risk that we take when we're trying to innovate. Mm -hmm. It's also, I think, about not being too complacent uh in the position that you are because uh to to maybe go out of your comfort zone uh, yeah. i think one of the big stories was obviously kodak who we thought our business model is fine and never thought about reinventing themselves which i think creatives are very good at uh and then they kind of like fell behind um by yeah by landslide well, the irony about kodak is they invented the they invented the digital camera and then decided not 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 to move forward with it so they they even invent you know they metaphorically they invented the nail in their coffin right <laughs> yeah. that's that's the sad story about them if another company had invented it and just that that product took over that's one thing but to invent the thing that led to your downfall is just shows a huge lack of of leadership, of of future focus, of you know being in a position to shape a market and shape technology adoption, which is what we're seeing all organisations trying to do now. So the Kodak example is a really good one. Mm -hmm. I'll just check if there's maybe if if somebody has one more question. I'll wait for a couple of seconds for you to type your question. Or Stella asked one question. I'm trying to get it out of the chat. So she said, uh, which is a very open question. 
what about being creative in a way that makes money by the way sure. <laughs> um yeah how how do you i think she what she what she's getting at is how do you monetize creativity i think that's one of the main so, questions for most creatives okay so you monetize creativity by using creativity to solve genuine systemic problems right you w when we when we build that innovation capability and when we're trying to innovate the first component of that is what innovation do we need what needs an innovative solution you know any designer out there and there'll be loads of designers uh, 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 listening in now or watching in now you know all of us as designers and as an ex designer this mantra is absolutely true 99% of the solution is the brief right what we don't do well enough as organizations is articulate the right brief and what i mean by that in layman's terms is often as organizations we're solving the wrong problem or we're solving a symptom of the real problem creativity turns becomes valuable when we use creativity and we use different thinking only when we're solving the real real problem that's when we create the bridge from a proper valuable systemic problem and we use creativity to create a wicked solution and that's when creativity becomes valuable but often creativity is used and it has value in itself but it doesn't create value because it's solving a problem that is either isn't valuable enough isn't the right one or isn't systemic enough i.e we're solving a problem for a small market or a few people rather than you know a huge a, a sector so mm -hmm. creativity in itself is great but only when applied to the right problem and i guess yeah knowing your audience is part of that as well you know you can't just do something that feels right for you but it needs to be a, a creative solution that can be applied and it would be helpful to others as well sure so that's when we get into collaboration human centered approaches proper like real collaboration and co-creation with customers or with the people that have the problem that needs to be solved not observing them and then saying oh well we think they've got that problem we'll now go away and creatively come up with a solution you can't in the analogy of, the, of this session the bridge needs to be maintained it's not a case of using the analogy the customer with the problem is over there on that side of the river and we're on this side and we've we've seen what they're doing and we'll solve the problem the bridge needs to be created so that both groups of people can work together co-creating with customers is absolutely paramount and that's that's a bridge that we need to get better at building okay thank you very much chris for your My time pleasure. participating for the very inspirational keynote uh i'm just was we have sasha here as well um do you, sasha do you have a question maybe for chris no i just really want to thank chris it's very inspiring and just listening to you uh there's a lot of lessons and messages i take for our own organization you know we're an innovation agency we want to stimulate innovation among companies in luxembourg mm -hmm. and it's extremely important that we ourselves function um as you say in a human-centric man manner yeah. so that our colleagues come to work um, with a sense of, uh, of purpose. Uh, yeah. And I think we have that. Uh, and just listening to you, there's so much more that we can just stimulate inside. And so thank you very much for that. And I really think it's great that um, all our colleagues and uh, companies here in Luxembourg and creatives get to listen to you. And I'm sure this will drive a lot more forward in Luxembourg. So thank you very much for that. Thanks, Sasha. Thank you. I'll briefly maybe put up the Chris's contact details on screen. So there you go. If you would like to get in touch with him or if you'd like his presentation, we just let us know and we'll quite happily share that with you. Um, thanks again, Chris. Uh, it's been brilliant having you with us. Um, and we'll continue our journey on this launch and we're on the Meet the Zebras. Uh, and I'm sure we'll be in touch and hopefully we'll be able to collaborate further in the future with you. My Thank pleasure. You, Thanks, Mark. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. So I'm quickly just going through the presentation. Sorry. So we just had Chris as uh, our keynote speaker with the Q&A. Thank you also to the audience and participants for asking your questions and for making it very interactive. So as the next part of the program, 
we will have the Minister of Culture, Sam Tonson, uh, who will address you with a recorded video message and talk about culture, uh, innovation, and culture, Alex, uh, and ASH 2022. So I'll leave the floor for the Minister of Culture, Sam Tonson. Schönen guten Morgen, ich bin froh, dass Sie heute auch von dem, was Sie dort als Matto Beize sind, für den wichtigen Aspekt von den Kreativindustrien heute zu Lützebusch aus dem Bereich von der Kultur einfach kurz zu belichten. Die Kreativindustrien sind auch dank Lux Innovation wirklich an den Mittelpunkt geregelt. Ich fand das auch für den kulturellen Sektor einen wichtigen Aspekt, in den vielleicht heute so in der Diskussion negligiert wird, den aber auch für die Position vom Kultursektor zu Lützebusch ganz wichtig ist. Die Kultur ist nicht äh, just kreativ, die Kultur ist auch ein, ein wichtiges Element von unserem ökonomischen Development, hat dadurch auch eine, eine Position äh, zu verteidigen und hat auch etwas äh, mit dem Famous Nation Branding zu tun, wie man im Ausland äh, steht, notamment zum Beispiel, äh, hat man das gut gesehen, äh, lo, wo man eine Ouverture aber von den Theater, von den Museen hatte, während das am Ausland nicht der Fall ist, wo aber viel äh, Scheinwerfer auch da ob der kulturelle Sektor zu Lützebusch kommen sind. Was machen wir ähm, am Moment äh, im kulturellen Niveau, für das auch noch zu stärken? Auf der anderen Seite haben wir die Kultur Alix an die Leben gerufen, dass das Assistat nach einem ASBL, das wird aber nur ein Etablissement Publik äh, geschwungen, äh, wo es darum geht, äh, sowohl Artisten wie aber auch Entreprisen aus dem kulturellen Sektor professionell zu begleiten, zu unterstützen, am Aufbau von der Karrieren natürlich heute zu Lützebusch, mit dann auch für alle mit der Perspektive, für über die Grenzen heraus ein Reunement zu haben. Wieso ist das wichtig? Mal ganz einfach, weil wir einfach in delimitierten Territoire sind, weil am kulturellen Sektor vielleicht noch mehr wie auf anderen Plätzen einfach gewissen Autozentrismus besteht, und es für die Tendenz wird, für dich mal Sängartisten an den Vordergrund zu stellen. Und das ist aber auch so, dass ganz viele Großländer auch hier eine Kulturagence haben, für eben das Reunement von den Artisten über die Grenzen heraus zu unterstützen. Wir haben hier auch gezielt auf Pluridisziplinarität gesagt, das heißt, wir haben nicht nur die klassisch ähm, kulturellen Sparten wie Art Plastik, Theater, Tanz, die wir hier unterstützen. Es geht auch um die Architektur, um den Design, um die Numerik, äh, an ob äh, Metier da River, das heißt, äh, wir sehen ja auch, dass immer mehr transversal geschafft wird, dass immer mehr pluridisziplinär geschafft wird, und wir wollen da keine, äh, keine strikte Trennungen haben, mehr den Künstler als ganz äh, so unterstützen. Auf der anderen Seite haben wir das Projekt von ASH 2022, auch heute geht viel auf Pluridisziplinarität gesagt, es geht viel auf Innovation gesagt, Lux Innovation war nicht für neu, vor äh, am Komitee der Lektüre, wo das Projekt äh, belegt gesehen, wo auch die Innovation ein wichtiges Aspekt davon war, wo, wo am Ende fällt nur äh, 17 Prozent von den Projekten sich äh, rund um die Architektur an den Design äh, drehen. Auch hier ein wichtiges Aspekt, den für die Grenzen heraus äh, belegt zu gehen, nicht nur, weil wir zusammen mit der französischen Grenzregion schaffen, aber auch, weil eben äh, am Jahr 2022 natürlich Scheinwerfer werden, ob das kulturell Lützebusch Lützebüsch gerichtet sind. Ein ganz wichtiger Aspekt habe ich von der eben auch den, dass man nicht just die Idee aus, dass das Lauf hier 2022 hier etwas abgebaut wird, sondern dass man gucken, für auch die Riva heraus, die ganze Region am Süden zu stärken. Hier wird viel zusammen geschafft zwischen Education, Forschung, Tourismus und natürlich Kultur und Kreativität. Und es geht darum, dass die Pol, den du am Gang hast, ein Stuhl, auch zusammen mit ProSüd, über die Jahre 2022 heraus wird existieren. Ein wichtiges Element leider auch hier bei der Innovation, notamment mit der digitalen Kunst, wo große ähm, Aktien wird darauf gelöst gehen, aber wo ich zuversichtlich bin, dass das auch wird über die Jahre 2022 heraus wird entstehen. Ich wünsche Ihnen noch eine flotte Diskussion heute. Ähm, bis geschön. Adi. So a big thank you to the Minister of Culture, Sam Tonson, for joining us with her video and for talking about culture and innovation and the projects that are ongoing currently. Um, I think Chris was nicely sort of nestled in between uh, uh, the Minister uh, for Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises and the uh, Minister of Culture because he was actually creating that bridge and we were talking about that bridge and that intersection of creativity, culture, innovation and economy. Um, so that was a very nice presentation. Uh, which fitted in brilliantly between the two. Um, as uh, this is now uh, up to me, I guess it's my part to talk to you uh, about uh, brief, very briefly about the cluster 
and uh, the zebras and uh, what we have in store and, and uh, what concept and structure we devised over the last weeks and months. Um, so to give you an overview, because it's, it's quite broad, when we say creative, uh, creative and cultural industries, let's say, it, there are over 12 different branches or subsectors. So here at one glance, to show you a little bit what that sector has to offer. So it goes from architecture right over to design, uh, digital media and music. And our cluster at Lux Innovation is there to support those businesses, to connect with each other uh, in case they don't know each other yet, to collaborate, but also to connect to other sectors and create this kind of cross sectoral uh, collaboration, but also leading to innovation. Um, here a number on screen, why 600? Because uh, in the last four years, the cluster has grown to now, uh, as on the cusp, let's say, of having 600 members. We are just under uh, that sort of magic number of 600 members. Uh, and there was this grassroots movement of people uh, deciding to join the cluster uh, and adhering to the cluster and, and becoming members uh, from across those 12 different branches. Um, the minister, Lex Dallas, mentioned it. The work that has been done at Lux Innovation thanks to a tremendous effort of our marketing, uh, market and intelligence a team headed by Sarah Bouchon. They have um, put the figures together from 2019 and 2020. So this is the first time we've done this analysis uh, to show the creative industries uh, sector in Luxembourg. So there you have the number of the companies and the estimated workforce. This will be published um, later in more detail as this will be an interactive dashboard where you'll be able to click and see the different sort of geolocalization in Luxembourg where those businesses are, how they are divided in, in Luxembourg and how they spread across the uh, various categories. Um, the minister also said, the minister Lex Della said uh, that the platform the cluster created has become a reference. Uh, we've had over 40,000 views in the last uh, two and a half years and have over 400 registered uh, profiles on there. And it's something that you can consult uh, to find creative products and services in Luxembourg, but also to connect to creatives uh, among themselves and other industries who uh, visit the website. So with over 215,000 page views uh, and people staying there on average for five minutes, I think it has started to become the reference in Luxembourg for people looking at creativity. Then talking about the zebras, the concept, why? I think Chris already spoke about it. It's been uh, a difficult time, more, more than usual, with a pandemic that's hit us. And it felt that we are not able to see each other anymore and that we should be celebrating um, creative industries because they have a role to play in terms of innovation with their creative problem-solving minds. So the background is that from the 15th till the 21st of April, um, there is the World Creativity and Innovation Week, uh, with the culmination of that being the World and, uh, Creativity and Innovation Day on the 21st of April. So it just felt natural to kind of join that initiative and say that we will place a series of webinars during that week and to um, put the spotlight on creative industries uh, to discuss with the sector actors, but also to inform and sensitize them about what exists. And I think key is also to inspire people, bring them together uh, to inspire collaboration and new projects. The concept in itself, so we use that image of uh, the zebra because it's a very resilient animal and belongs to the family of the horses, but looks slightly different. Um, uh, the analogy being made to the humans and the creatives always looking uh, a little bit different or coming across different to most humans. Some of the topics that we'll be discussing will be uh, crafts, co-working will be an important topic, uh, academia, uh, entrepreneurship, startups, collaborations, and I'll show you more about that on the next slides. So how? So we've been thinking about the idea, structuring it, and there's been a team of over 20 people at Lux Innovation, including our partners like the Chamber of Skilled Crafts, the Chamber of Commerce, and federations that we've consulted and tried to build this together in a collaborative effort. When? Well, the date just here on full screen again, from the 15th until the 21st of April, and it will be on InEvent, which is a digital platform that we'll be using We'd love to meet people in person, but I think 
at the moment we have a responsibility as well to keep people safe and that's at the forefront of our mind as well so we're keeping it in a digital setup for this year who knows what the future might bring on that front so the topics i mentioned academia so we structured that from a to zebra uh, academia co-working entrepreneurship in showing those different elements and discussing them uh, with actors here in luxembourg and in the shape of round, ta round uh, table discussions to go deeper into the subject and talk about trends, developments, and also maybe gaps, uh, which will help us in our in our work here at Lux Innovation as well. Then the other topics will be funding. I think an important part, what exists in terms of funding, and we will uh, have a look at the macro view of crowdfunding. How do you do it on off your own back to microfinance national programs, uh, which involves partner organizations, but also the structured programs that we have here at Lux Innovation. And then we move up to the European level of uh, programs that exist uh, and colleagues at Lux Innovation as well, that obviously handle programs like the Horizon Europe um, funding program. Intellectual property, um, very important. Uh, Onura already mentioned it in the chat earlier. Uh, so here we're working together very, very closely with the uh, Institut de la Propriété Intellectuelle uh, Luxembourg, so the EPIL. And they actually are powering that webinar specifically with, talk, uh, with talks about intellectual property for creative and, and cultural industries uh, in order to vulgarize the subject a little bit, explain what it means, what the opportunities are, and give the opportunity to have a, a Q&A with experts, but also to showcase uh, success stories. Then collaboration is always key, I think, in terms of collaborative uh, and creative uh, projects. So that will be a key aspect when talking about ASH 2022, but also DOC 11, the creative cluster on the German side in, in Saarland. Cross-sector innovation uh, will take us to blockchain, digital, uh, digital fashion, where we'll discuss those trends and how that could actually be applied in the creative industries as well. The zebras themselves, we talked about them. That's the 12 categories and the various people coming together to talk about their passion, their jobs, their crafts, and their projects. Who? Well, it's uh, Lux Innovation and a whole network of uh, partners that we work together with very closely. We've associated ourselves and contacted the World Creative and Innovation Week uh, because it's anchored on that specific week. And we obviously have this mission of connecting the dots so that sits perfectly to create a project like this one. Um, who, again, well, the creatives, the zebras, are an essential part of this, but it's not just for the zebras, it's also for people that are interested in creativity or that want to learn more about what Luxembourg has to offer. So we've structured it in a, in a way where we have people like Chris, international keynote speakers, uh, TEDx speakers, but also Luxembourgish talent abroad. We mentioned the North Face. Well, we'll have the pleasure of welcoming Max Steffen, who is the head of um, global product design at the North Face in Colorado. We'll do a keynote for the design category. And uh, Tanya Majeros, who is illustrating The Simpsons for Fox, but also talents here in Luxembourg, uh, like Donato Rotuno, will do a, a keynote in the film and audiovisual category, or Patricia Lucetta. Uh, we'll spearhead the, the keynote for the music webinar. So a mix of people, and we'll get to the numbers in, in just a second. What? Well, it will be a series of 20 webinars. There you go. Um, with 18 keynotes altogether. Guest speakers and panelists. So if I take the keynote speakers out, over 150, uh, which is a very impressive number. And here are the webinars to show you the topics and the timings of what we will be di discussing and, and showing you. After this webinar, there will also be, as Sasha concludes with the key messages and also with the official launch, uh, we will um, open up the registration process so people will then be able to register for those webinars. So the 15th will be more the ecosystem around creative industries, whereas the 19th and the 20th of April will be the zebras themselves. Here's in the 20th. And the 21st will be that, let's say, celebration on a very vast and, and global level to talk about creativity and innovation. And we'll talk about that cross-sectorial innovation aspect as well. And we have the great honor 
to do a closing ceremony with Marcy Siegel. Um, if you looked at the slide earlier about the World Creative Innovation Week, Marcy Siegel is a Canadian and she started this whole initiative back in 2002 out of a need because she found a flyer in Canada where they said Canada needs creativity. And so 19 years later, it has really become this world movement thanks to her. And we're very honored to have her as uh, a guest at the closing ceremony. Where? It will be in, on a digital platform in event, so you have to register to participate and you'll be able to access all our webinars and it will be free. Perfect. Uh, probably not. I know Sasha is listening, but um, <laughs> new things usually are not perfect. And if they were perfect, it would be too easy because we don't always have all the answers. So, but we'll show you, surely make our best with the whole team uh, to make it as perfect as possible. And it will allow us afterwards, obviously, to tweak it um uh, the different aspects uh when need be because you kind of need to be reactive in those situations when you try with a pioneer pioneering spirit to do something new um you don't always know what's around the corner um that was it for my part so it's now um time to leave the stage for our ceo sasha with her key messages and uh and to launch the zebras the meet the zebras campaign officially Thank you, Mark. <laughs> that was really, really impressive. And um, I mean, I, I'm fully aware of everything that's going on, but just seeing it all there in a nutshell, and after listening to Chris, it all comes so beautifully together. So well done for, for getting all this up and running. And I know it's a very intense month ahead, uh, but I know it will absolutely be perfect. So <laughs> yeah, all is on track. Um, Little closing speech here. So um, basically, I just like to say it's how wonderful it's to be here to all you creatives, to all those listening in today. Um, first thing, I think what I really note is how important the unexpected is, because the, it's the unexpected that really is often the trigger of innovation. And when we are suddenly faced with a new situation, when everything that we took for granted. Um, that's when we, and it vanishes, that's when our minds really have to adapt and that we have to come up with new ideas and, and solutions. And during these past 12 months, since we've been hit by this pandemic, we have seen so much how individuals and companies have had to reinvent themselves, have let go, have had to let go of their daily routines and step out of their comfort zones and do things radically different. So, Calling the creative zebras uh, was for me certainly also quite unexpected, uh, not to say even baffling. Um, it really took me a moment <laughs> or even two to figure out what Mark exactly had in mind with this, <laughs> which just shows also how I myself um, am also set in my own ways uh, of thinking and doing things. And I need someone, uh, and we all do, like Mark, like you, the creatives, to actually bridge that gap. It is so important for all of us, and that's what this all is about. You, we are an innovation agency, and it's our role to push forward for new perspectives that generate ideas and bring up opportunities and find the solutions, the solutions that meet the needs, as Chris also mentioned before. I think that's really important too. So I'm really pleased that this month we are able to put the limelight on the creative industries with the aim to make this connection between the creatives and the other areas of the industry in Luxembourg, the other areas of the industry will, which will benefit tremendously from the mindset of the creatives. Um, creatives, uh, as a rule, think differently. They have great potential to contribute ideas and solutions to the other industry, industries. And as Chris said so well, it's through their mindset, their creativity, that they turn the volume on purpose. And that is so important. That is a real driver and we need that. So all the other industries, I believe, can benefit tremendously from the experience and the expertise of companies from from the way they operate differently and vice versa. I also think that the creatives can also benefit from how our other industries function 
and how they also generate value. So it really is a win-win uh, opportunity here. It's about creating the partnerships across different sectors of our economy. Lux Innovation um, has been doing a lot to foster cross-sector innovation with the creative industries. And for instance, just at the end of last year, we launched what we called a Circular by Design Challenge. Um, it's a, an initiative launched through the Ministry of Economy. And the idea is to link 10 creatives with industry partners to facilitate the development of new solutions and innovative business models in line with the principles of the circular economy, which is absolutely crucial. This 12-week coaching program has helped the participants also to grow and mature. And on the 29th of April, our Minister of Economy, Franz Fayol, will announce the winners of this very first edition. So you are all most welcome to join and to discover here what the creative minds and the industry can achieve together. As Mark mentioned, uh, this series of events, Meet the Zebras, that we are launching here today. It will run over the next few weeks and will give a number of you the opportunity to present your companies and the innovative projects to potential partners. And the roundtable discussions that will take place will really give a deep dive into each of the sector's 12 branches and offer to really discuss the future trends and opportunities. I think there's also this series event will also allow you to learn more about the innovation support that we can provide at Lux Innovation. You are fully aware that you have a fervent supporter and an advocate with Mark Lees, our creative industries cluster manager. Mark will also guide you, and he does, through a whole range of other services at Lux Innovation. He is your main contact point. He is there for you. And he will make sure that you are guided in a way that is really efficient and helpful to you. We have a startup acceleration team, which advises young innovative companies and helps them with their funding applications. We have a European funding team, and they can identify the mo most relevant, maybe European projects that could be helpful to you. Um, Mark also interacts with the other cluster managers and connects the creatives to the other industries here in Luxembourg. And I'd like to also mention our market intelligence department, which has drawn up the creative industry sector mapping that the Minister, Je Minister Dellis just presented too. And this mapping is really important because it helps us gain new insights into the composition of the sector and thus better understand what kinds of needs should be met to stimulate the development of the sector even more. So last but not least, I'd also like to mention we have the marketing and communication team, and they have been essential, um, uh, absolutely, to also organize this Meet the Zebras event today. So our aim at Lux Innovation is also to bring the companies we support in touch with the other organizations that can help them, such as the Chamber of Commerce, and the Chamber of Skilled Crafts. And during the webinars, I am pleased that both chambers will share their experience with us and highlight how they can support the development of the creatives. So the past year has been very challenging, but although some of you have been heavily impacted, the creative sector has shown remarkable resilience and has, above all, helped the economy and society as a whole. By being able to turn yourselves around and come up with creative digital solutions, you have made it possible for us to continue to enjoy music, literature, theater, and other forms of entertainment online. This is, is what really has helped us all remain sane. The gaming sector has also boomed very much during this period, and I can tell that definitely from my teenage son. Um, but jokes aside, the creatives have also helped businesses stay alive. For example, by developing apps and websites that have allowed these more traditional businesses to continue to reach their customers. Without the creatives industries, this would not have been possible. So thank you for that. You, the creatives, are the key drivers of innovation. Hence, I'm really glad that you are part of Lux Innovation. And I really wish you a most fruitful exchange during the Meet the Zebra webinars. And I really look forward to discovering the outcomes. Thank you to all of you for being so involved. Thank you to our ministers, Delas and Tarsan, 
for being here today, for supporting us, for giving us their full political drive. Um, and I also like to thank all of those who are part of the cluster advisory groups for your involvement. We need this collaboration. We need this interaction. It's this diversity, this uh, collaboration and partnership that really brings things forward. So thank you very much for being part of this all together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sasha. Um, so if um, I'll quickly pull up maybe a slide where people uh, have the contact details. I might have to whisk through to the presentation to show it to you. Uh, in case people have any questions, you can ask questions maybe now um, before we conclude this webinar. If there are any questions about the event itself, um, then I'm looking at the questions board. There was a question about the webinar. If it's possible to see the presentation in replay, yes, the webinar is being recorded. So we will post the, the replay of this webinar afterwards. Uh, so that's entirely possible. And Reza asked if it'd be possible to get uh, Chris's um, presentation. Yes, we will send you uh, Chris's presentation. Uh, So, um, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for a really rich and interesting session. Um, thank you, Sasha. Thank you, Chris, as well. And um, yeah, let's meet the zebras in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm wishing you all a happy Easter and a nice weekend. Thank you for participating. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.